Wow, it's been ages since I've done something like this. So basically, I used to make a lot of videos on YouTube and then one day I stopped. What I realized that I have to do is to make videos about things that I'm passionate about and things that I like. So last year I did manage to challenge and all of the books are listed in my Goodreads and you can find that on the link down below. Is that how you do it still? That used to be the thing in, in the YouTube thing. Down below there's all the links and the thingies. However, I would like to quickly just go through all of the 52 books that I've read this year for you guys with a quick small review of each book and whether or not I would recommend it for you. The first book I read was Faux by Ian Reid. I read it because I read I'm Thinking About Ending Things and I couldn't stop thinking about that story. So I realised that Ian Reid probably writes books that are made for my type of mind and it made me very interested. This book is very similar that you don't really know what's going on but it's also very exciting until the very end. The second book I read was Sundial by Catriona Ward. I'd read The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward before this and it was one of my favourite books last year so I had to pick this up. This book is about trauma from the past coming to find you in the future and this woman had a family house out in the desert and she brings her child with her out there to bond with her and then things ensue. I would recommend this to you if you are in a reading rut and you need something that's quite fast paced. The next book I read was Legend and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This is a cosy, sweet, homey read about an orc called Vivian who used to be a mercenary who doesn't want to do that life anymore and then she starts a cafe where she sells coffees and cakes. This is the book for you if you're interested in fantasy but you're sick of the large battle scenes and the drawn out explanations of houses and uh, families and etc. This is a quick, cosy, comfort read. The next book I read was The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. Now Lucy Foley writes crime novels that are meant to be twisty. They're not as twisty as I would like them to be. So if you're into like super crazy mind-blowing twists, this probably isn't for you. But if you're into something that's like interesting, a bit intriguing, a bit thrillery, this book is quite exactly that. Was it my favorite one of hers that I've read? No. Um, would I probably read her next book as well? Yes. The next book that I read was The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. <coughs> <laughs> Olivia Black is trying to silence me. <coughs> not my, not my favorite, I'm sorry, Olivia. The premise of this book was so good. I was so excited to read it. It was about these magicians who have this competition to try and enter into a secret society based on their uh, abilities, etc. But there are so many parts of this book that are too long and too boring. I'm sorry. So uh, there is a second book in this series. It is not high up on my to read list, but it is there. I might pick it up at some time in the future. If you like things like Dark Academia Crust with a little bit of magic, this might be for you. The next book I read is Enoch Avio Senior by Arne Svingen. This is a book I read with my students. So if you are a Norwegian teacher out there teaching anything from fourth to seventh grade and you need a book that suits pretty much any kind of group of students, this is a very good book. It's exciting, it's fast paced, it's kind of uh, thrillery. These children meet up at night and break into people's houses just to sort of disturb the peace but not break or ruin anything. Um, and I would say that pretty much all of the students in my class gave it a double thumbs up when we were finished reading it and they were wondering when the next one came out. And I had to break the heart and say that this is a standalone book, nothing more will happen. And they were wondering how it could possibly end on a cliffhanger like that. The next book I read is actually a play called No Consciente Le Comme by Jon Fosse, Norwegian playwright and now Nobel laureate Jon Fosse. Uh, I read this because I had it as part of my curriculum for my Norwegian studies. Not uh, very typical of the things that I would read. I would definitely not read anything else by Jon Fosse. It's a bit too like airy fairy, not really concrete on anything. There's this couple and then they meet the third guy and then they start talking in circles of whether or not they can trust each other. And that's basically the entire play. So I think that perhaps it would be more interesting to see it in a theater than having read a play like that in a book. The next book I read was Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Actually, I read this by listening to the audiobook and actually it is Neil who reads the audiobook himself, which is wonderful. Neil has this amazing, soothing, deep voice that makes you feel like you understand everything that he's saying. Did I learn a bunch of astrophysics? Probably not. Was I thoroughly entertained the entire time I was listening to this? Yes, definitely. So if you want something that's 
uh, fact-based or non-fiction and you need something that's sort of soothing as well, I would definitely recommend this to you. The next book I read was The Mothers by Britt Bennett. Uh, this is not my favourite Britt Bennett book. My favourite is probably The Vanishing Half that I read last year. Uh, I was struggling to remember actually what this book was about because I blazed through it in such a hurry because it was not entertaining enough for me and I think at the point that I read this I needed something that was a bit more like bap 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 uh, and this was just not hit hitting the mark. I seem to remember something about a group of mothers that take care of people who need their help, something about a teen pregnancy, uh, I think that's it. So uh, read this if you like. Brit Bennett's books perhaps? If you're a big big fan? Maybe not, I don't know, maybe don't read this book. The next book that I read was Chenance au Verbiette by Dag Sursta. This is also one of the books that was on my curriculum for my Norwegian course. Would I pick this up again? Never ever ever. This was one of the most annoying, irritating, terrible things that I've ever been forced to read and I would never recommend anyone having to put themselves through this. The character is thoroughly unlikable. I think that might be the point of it all but you just you sit the entire book and just annoy yourself over how incredibly irritating and stupid he is. I think maybe perhaps this is just not the genre for me but I did have a talk with a couple of my fellow students on the course and they were all equally annoyed by this character and also this book. So would I recommend this book to you? Never. Never ever. Don't ever read it. The next book that I read was Engelisnern by Anders Tultland which is also part of my Norwegian curriculum. However, this book was completely the opposite. This I would actually take with me back to my classroom and teach to my students. It is about um, uh, what would be perceived to be a hospital with sick people there, children and adults. And I, it kind of leaves it open to interpretation. It's a bit of a short story. And I asked my students to read parts of it with me and to tell me what they were thinking about. And they uh, saw completely different parts of the story that I didn't see and opposite. So I think that it's a bit of a like, open-ended thing, talking about death and how we talk about death with children and how we talk about death with old people. And um, it is definitely recommended for children as well. It seems like quite a bit of a heavy subject matter. So perhaps if you want to teach this uh, book in your class, read it ahead of time and consider whether or not you think it might be suitable for your students. The next book that I read was Circe by Madeline Miller. Now anyone who knows me knows my absolute adoration and love for The Song of Achilles, which was one of my favorite books that I read last year. So definitely had to pick up Circe by Madeline Miller. Um, did it live up to the hype of uh, Achilles? Probably not, but it wasn't like very far behind. While Achilles got five stars from me, this book got four stars. I would also definitely recommend that you read the audiobook because the woman who narrates it is so, it's so like, I can't, so soothing. Like you listen to this and it's a story about Greek mythology and um, it, wars basically but still you get soothed by it so I would definitely recommend the audiobook over the paper book. But get both, get both. The next book that I read was called Ubesvart Andrup by Nora Dosnes. That is a graphic novel in Norwegian about uh, the 22nd of July terror attacks in Norway. Now people who know anything about this story know that this story is usually told through the eyes of the survivors or people who have experienced parts of this story. What's so good about this story is that this girl who is the main protagonist in this book is not affected by it directly at all, yet her life is completely turned upside down because of the way that she starts to think about her own life after the terror attacks. It kind of changes the trajectory of her and her friend's friendship together and she's also set to start high school right after this happens so I guess it kind of changes her perspective of the way that this, she thinks about everything and is a very interesting and also very beautiful graphic novel as well so I would recommend this for you if you have um, perhaps younger students that you want to talk about this topic with or if you're just interested in graphic novels in general. The next book that I read was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is not my favourite Taylor Jenkins Reid book. I have read uh, plenty of them and I definitely think that there are better ones than this one. Um, the way that this is written is it's written in an interview style. So I started reading the physical book, which is why I own this, and I just could not get it going. Like it kept stagnating for me. It was a bit boring. You see, I got to page 
43 before I kind of gave up. And then I downloaded the audiobook instead, which was a much better choice because the audiobook has different voice actors for different characters. Now this is written in like a script way, uh, which makes it much more interesting and fun to listen to when there are people narrating it for you. And obviously, you know, if you don't want to invest almost 400 pages into this story, you can just go and watch the Prime show with Sam Claflin and Riley Keough, I think. The next book that I read was also a comic book by Nora Dosnes called Tik Nivriakta. This book is for a bit younger children than Ubesvart Anrup, which uh, kind of uh, is obvious when you look at the covers. It's a bit more colorful, a bit more like bright and shiny. And it's about this kid who's about to start seventh grade and she's worried because all of her friends around her seem to be growing up and changing their interests. And she doesn't really feel like she wants to do that quite yet and she can't really find her footing you know her place in the world i would recommend this to you if you have students in the age range fourth to seventh grade as well and um i think all of the students or at least all of the girls in my class have read this book and given it a thumbs up because it's quite a sweet read so if you're into that you should read this the next book that I read was To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. Now Paolini is known for having written the Aragon series and this is a complete departure from that. It's a full on hardcore sci-fi. So basically this girl who finds this alien relic um, makes an accident happen and ends up killing a bunch of people and then uh, things ensue. Um, the way that this character is written is is just not for me. It's very like manic pixie dream girl, not my favorite style of writing women, and especially when it's written by men, the way that men describe women in these types of stories. So I would say that uh, if you're interested in sci-fi, there are other sci-fi books that are much more succinct and shorter because this is 880 pages. Um, and I think that there are other things that you might read instead of this because this was not my fave. And also, this is the first in a series of books and I will definitely not be picking up the second. If you are interested in any kind of subculture in the Norwegian bigger cities, this is a book that you need to read. The next book I read was What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Now this book I read in the height of Last of Us fame. So this book is based on a short story by Edgar Allan Poe called The Fall of the House of Usher. And if you've read that or if you've watched the Last of Us, you kind of know what the premise of this story is going to be, including, you know, mushrooms. I'm not going to say more than that. However, it is a very short book, it's a short read, it's interesting. Uh, if you think that sort of like reanimation and things like that is something for you, it's a little bit gross, a little bit disgusting. There's some of the descriptions of the mushrooms might deter certain people from reading this book. But if that doesn't deter you and you liked the show and you liked, you know, descriptions of body horror and things like that, this is a book that you should read. The next book that I read is called The Kaiju Preservation Society by John Scalzi. This is a book that I read because of my um, book club. And I don't think that I would have picked this up because I don't even know, or I didn't even know what a kaiju was until I read this. And it turns out a kaiju is a type of Godzilla, I believe, or maybe Godzilla is a type of kaiju. Uh, however, this book is like a fast-paced, boppity bop sort of pop culture, pop fiction kind of read. This man gets hired in the height of COVID to go in and do a secret service style job where he's transported into a different dimension where there are kaiju living and then they try to prevent the certain terror attack and you know, it's a big old story about kaiju and big old monsters and if that interests you slash sci-fi slash a bit of fantasy this is a book for you the next book that i read was i'm glad my mum died by janette mccurdy this book has been widely spoken about and I don't think that there are many things I can say about it that hasn't already been said. Um, I don't necessarily agree in the way that Jeanette McCurdy has gone forward to write this book about her mother after her mother has passed. However, the way that people deal with their traumas has to be completely their own and I, I hold my hands up and say that I have no idea what it would be like to be a child Disney star or Nickelodeon or whatever it was that she was um, and however I would react if that was me. So it's an interesting read. Uh, I didn't really know much about Jeanette McCurdy before I read this book other than the fact that she was, you know, obviously a child star. Um, if you like celebrity autobiographies and a bit of a scaling one at that, you could definitely read this book. The next book that I read is The Secret History by Donna Tart, and the reason I'm smiling like this is because this is the book that managed to split my friend group into two. The people who absolutely love this book 
and uh, me and the others who don't really get it. Uh, I think my problem here was that I did read the audiobook and the woman that narrates the audiobook has the most annoying, drawling, irritating accent and the way that she reads it is just pissed me off. I don't know why, but I just could not get into it and it was just annoying and irritating. And this book is huge, it's like 600 pages long and it took forever to get through. I think the audiobook was like 21 hours. Um, but I guess the people who love this book tend to love it for the fact that it is like interesting, dark academia, sort of moody. Um, I don't know, I can't describe it because that's not the way that I feel about this book. But if you're into dark academia and you know, for some reason haven't read The Secret History by Donna Tart yet, you should read this book. The next book that I read is Woman Eating by Claire Coda. This is a completely different take on a vampire style book that I have, I've never seen anything like this before. Uh, I think that if you are interested in vampire stories, this is one that should not be missed by you. It is completely modern and a completely different take on the way that someone might be a vampire if that was even possible. Uh, actually, throughout the entire story, you only really know about two vampires. It's this woman and her mother. And then her mother seems to slowly be lapsing into some sort of dementia and is put into a home. And this woman has all this angst about trying to keep it secret around you know, trying her mother not to spill all the beans and... Uh, and I didn't ever think that I was going to be able to read an existential angst type of book based on whether or not I wanted to live my life as a vampire. So if you were a Twilight girly or find any sort of vampirism or anything like that interesting but you want a new take on it, this is a book for you. The next book I read was Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. This is the typical sort of like thriller, scary, sort of a crimey book that makes you think that you know what's going on and then it tries to flip the script on you and surprise you in some way. Uh, at no point during this read was I ever surprised, I have to be honest. This was recommended to me as sort of like a, oh my god, it's gonna blow your mind type of story. My mind remains unblown. I think that perhaps I've read one too many of these types of books before and it has kind of removed the ability to surprise me. So, but if you do like a closed room kind of mystery thing, um, this story is obviously about a woman and her husband and you don't really know whatever goes on behind closed doors. Um, I think that this book might be something that could be maybe fourth or fifth on your list if you're really, really lacking of something to read. Otherwise, maybe you wouldn't read this book. The next book that I read was Life Ceremonies by Sayaka Murata. I read her book, uh, Convenience Store Woman, last year and absolutely loved it and realised that I seldom really do read books about people's lives outside of the typical milieu, <laughs> the typical like society that I myself live in. I know very little about everyday Japanese life and everyday Japanese culture. And I wanted to expand my horizons just a little bit more and I picked up this, which is a collection of Japanese short stories. I would definitely recommend you read this if you have read any of her other books and enjoyed them. It's kind of like the same sort of style, but just smaller and more bite-sized. And on that note, the next book that I read after that was Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. However, Earthlings is in its own category, in its own field. It's got its own bookshelf for all I know. This book surprised me in ways that I think books have not been able to do very much this year. I was completely taken, taken aback in a very good way and I really enjoyed it in like a morbid, sad way. The story is basically about this woman who her entire life has been a bit neglected by all of the authority figures in her life and the way that she's dealt with the trauma is to convince herself that she's an alien from a different planet. And I won't say anything about the culmination of the story, but it, it just gets crazier and crazier and crazier the way that she sort of bends over backwards to try and explain to herself that this isn't real and she is just basically waiting for a real life to begin. Uh, and the way that the trauma in this book is described is, is pretty horrific, but also very, very interesting. So if you enjoy books like that, you should definitely read this book. Now, after having read Earthlings, I became interested in trying to read up a little bit about trauma and the way that we respond to trauma, which is why I picked up The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. She is a doctor who does research into trauma and PTSD. Um, 
I can't really tell you much about what this book was really about, other than the fact that I remember it talking about trauma the way that I said. However, it was very in the moment type of reading for me. I remember there was something about soldiers and the way that they respond to PTSD after they have been to war, which I found very interesting, but I can't really, you know, recite afterwards. And so if you are into non-fiction and are interested in PTSD and trauma responses and things like that, I think that's, this might be a book for you. The next book that I read was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Now this book hit quite close to home. It's about a civilization collapse or more like a pandemic. And it kind of triggered all of those uncomfortable feelings around COVID and, uh, and lockdown and things like that for me. Um, and I think that's why I couldn't really quite bond with the story. Uh, I know that the story is all about the way that people try to remain human throughout losing everything. And uh, it's about this traveling band of actors and singers who do Shakespeare on the go after, you know, what, everything in the world has collapsed. Um, honestly, I was reading this book by audiobook when I was out traveling this summer and I did a lot of long bus rides and I listened to this book and I remember falling asleep multiple times and not really minding that I missed huge parts of the story. Um, it's not a great recommendation then I guess, so if you are interested in reading more about stories where people try to remain as humanity does I guess, uh, within crises and collapses, then this might be a book for you. The next book that I read was Eversion by Alastair Reynolds. This book is described as an original gothic science fiction novel. I agree with that. The plotline, however, is very repetitive and the way that you feel like you've been thrown back into the story so many times really, really irritated me. And this was a book that we discussed in my book club as well and pretty much everyone was just so annoyed and irritated in the writing style and the way that this book is is created that none of us really enjoyed the story. We were just waiting for it to be finished. This is the kind of book that feels like it's sort of lying to its readers while lulling you into a false sense of security and then sort of tricking you to believe that, aha, you thought that was real, you're silly. That's not real at all which I, I really don't enjoy. I don't like it when uh, authors feel like they're lying to their readers. So I would l recommend this book to you if you like that type of story writing or if you're really desperately looking for a new gothic science fiction book. Otherwise, perhaps skip this one. The next book that I read was The Very Secret Society for Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. See, I really wanted to love this book. I picked it up because I thought it might be along the lines of The House on the Cerulean Sea or Harry Potter, sort of like a quirky, magic-y sort of vibe, but I just, I could never really fall into the story. I felt like the characters were a bit underdeveloped and a bit boring, and all in all, I think it was a bit of a boring read. So perhaps skip this one. The next book that I read was Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. I have a lot of thoughts about this book because I spent ages trying to finish it and it was because I felt like it was very confusing because it doesn't really tell you anything. It just drops you in the middle of everything and expects you to just hang on and yes, it's explained sort of at the end of the book, but it's still very like, I'm not sure why I needed to sit through all of that uncertainty for the first 200 pages because it's not that long of a book anyways before you kind of explain to me what the point of this is. Um, I think that if you like being confused and you like being a bit like off kilter, this book is great. Otherwise, this book will annoy the crap out of you like it did to me. The next book that I read was actually a reread of Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. So most of you might know that the movie adaptation of this book came out this year. Was it this year? Feels like ages ago. Anyways, it was this year. Uh, and uh, as good as the movie is, I think that the book is better and I felt like I wanted to re-experience that and try and see if I could get back some of the magic that I felt when I read it the first time and I definitely did. This is one of those books that I feel like stuck with me from the first time that I read it and I would recommend it to anyone who is looking for a heartbreaking but awful and awesome love story. 
The next book I read was Anatomy by Dana Schwartz. This is the first part of a duology and I have the second book in my shelf ready to read in 2024. I enjoyed this book a lot. It's actually set in the 19th century in Edinburgh and the main character Hazel is majorly interested in anatomy and bodies and she wants to become a doctor but obviously isn't allowed because she's a woman um, and she finally starts to sneak into anatomy lessons and tries to learn things about the body and things happen you know once upon a time they used to steal cadavers to be able to operate them on them and things like that which you know if you're like me and you like body horror and you're a bit of a morbid girly you will definitely like this book but it also has an aspect of romance and a love story as well the next book that i read is uh, the novella nick and charlie by alice oseman this book is obviously a spin-off of heartstopper or not a spin-off but it's like a continuation of Heartstopper. And if you feel like you don't get enough of Nick and Charlie throughout the comics, you should definitely pick up the extra books that uh, Alice Osman has written alongside of the comics, like this one and another one that I will be mentioning very soon. They are uh, complementary to the story, but not necessary to understand the whole plot. So if you really like Heartstopper, you should pick this up. The next book that I read was also a comic book. It's called La Skogen Leve by Nora Dosnes. Again, this is the third book of hers that I read this year and the third book that I would recommend. This is a story about two girls who find out that they are about to bulldoze part of the forest that is behind their house and their fight to try and keep this forest giving because it is part of their uh, childhood and it's where they play and everything. And I feel like it's a sort of sweet nod to the climate activists like Greta Thunberg and all those people. Uh, in the way that it describes children fighting for the environment when the adults are too blind to be able to see the devastation that they're causing because of it. Um, yet again, I've read this book because I wanted to be able to recommend it to my students. Most of my students have actually read this book now and gave it a double thumbs up. So if you like things like that, you should definitely read this comic. The next book that I read was Tender is the Flesh by Agustina Bastarica. This book was recommended to me because I looked up lists of books that would disturb you, terrify you, and make you feel disgusted, which seems to be some of the books that I prefer the most. So, however, this did not quite live up to the hype for me. Basically, this book comes with a bunch of trigger warnings, one of them being murder and the other being cannibalism. Because the story is set in this world where they breed human beings for meat because the meat of the animals is not edible anymore. I enjoyed the plotline, I enjoyed the way that it was sort of premised, however, the characters were not really fleshed out enough for me and I didn't really believe some of the intentions that the characters had behind this. I mean, if you're gonna raise people as cattle and kill them, you need to be able to sort of advocate for why that is and that sort of felt a bit flat for me in this story. However, if you like disgusting books that talk about body horror and killing people and eating human meat, this might be a book for you. The next book that I read was Solitaire by Alice Oseman. This is also set within the Heartstopper universe. However, this book is completely onto its own, an entire novel. This book is about Charlie's sister Tori or Victoria Spring and her entire experience with something they call the solitaire vigilante or solitaire prankster in her school. Victoria's story is completely different to Nick and Charlie's and it's much darker, much more uh, teen angsty perhaps in a different way than Charlie and Nick's love story is. And if you are interested in expanding the universe of Alice Oseman within Heartstopper, you should definitely pick this book up. So the next two books that I read were basically rereads as well. They were Heartstopper 1 and 2. I was preparing for the fifth book to come out. I wanted to reread these because I kept rewatching the TV series, which is, you know, the most cute, amazing thing ever. And I kind of wanted to just relive this moment for a little bit. And, uh, you know, if you like Heartstopper, pick up a copy of the comics because if you've seen the, the TV show but you haven't read them, I guess you don't really know what you're missing. They're very, very cute in the comics as well. We're getting there, we're getting there, guys. Don't worry. All right, so the next book that I read, brace yourself, guys, was Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Uh, I read this because everybody was talking about this book. Did I like it? Not really. It follows basically all the tropes that I really don't like when it comes to read, writing types of books like this. Like the main character is supposed to be this weak, fragile little girl and yet she manages to do things that the massive men don't even manage to do. 
Um, the love scenes and the love tropes are just trite and stupid and the sex scenes made me cringe. I listened to the audiobook and I had to like fast forward through it because I felt so incredibly uncomfortable the way that they were written. And uh, I have absolutely no intention of picking up Fourth Wing's uh, second book. What's it called? Iron Flame? Never. No, I don't think so. It's just not for me. So I'm going to stop taking fantasy recommendations from TikTok now. I'm going to stop taking crime recommendations from TikTok now. The only TikTok girls that I'm going to be listening to now is going to be the ones that are recommending me the disgusting, scary horror books because those seem to be hitting every time. But if you like mediocre fantasy with dragons, you should read this book. The next book that I read is Sad Ghost Club by Lies Meddings. Have you ever heard of a ghost with social anxiety or depression? No? Well then you should read this book. It is a comic or a graphic novel and it is basically just based on the fact that anyone can struggle with life even if you're not even alive anymore. It's quite sad and sweet at the same time and I would recommend it to anyone who has enjoyed things like Heartstopper in the past and would like to read more comics. The next book that I read is The Running Grave by Robert Galbraith, AKA JK Rowling. Please do not come at me that I have been giving money to JK Rowling, terrible, turf, awful person, because I have not. I bought my book secondhand and the audiobook I have borrowed from my local library. So I've denoted absolutely no money directly to her. I just have to know, I have to know how this story ends with Robin and Strike and I've, invested thousands and thousands of pages into this story and I just, I, I, oh, it annoys me so much because I really, really enjoy it and she is one of the only few authors that can still surprise me with a plot. There are very few others who can still do that and it, I'm just as annoyed as you guys are. But I will definitely never be donating any more money directly to her via her book sales. Sorry, please don't cancel me. The next book that I read was Seance Tea Party by Remenai, which is a comic book or a graphic novel as well. It's basically about this girl who seems to understand that her friend circle is diminishing and becoming smaller, so she throws a tea party and becomes friends with a ghost that haunts her house instead. Very sweet, very simple. I try to recommend it to a couple of my students, but I still think that the English might be a bit too advanced for them still for fifth grade. Um, however, if you enjoy things like all of the other graphic novels, very cutesy, very sweet ones that I have recommended today, you will also really, really enjoy this. The next book that I read was a short story also in the Hearts of the Universe called This Winter by Alice Oseman. This Winter is basically about a Christmas for Charlie and Nick and the way that Charlie struggles through Christmas because of his eating disorder and the way that things have sort of become harder and harder for him to stay in his family. If you like Heartstopper, this is a given. It's a very quick read, it's very short. There's tons of pictures in here as well. You should pick this up. The next book that I read was If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nowlin. This book was recommended on the basis that it would be one of the saddest books that I had ever read and that I would be bawling on the floor in tears by the end of it. However, the ending was given away within the first 10 pages. I can't, I can't tell you how disappointed I was. Like they literally tell you what is going to happen and then the entire story you're just basically waiting for it. It's building and building and building. And yes, I guess part of it is knowing how it happens, but still the whole point of the story is like given away within the first part of it. I would much rather have skipped the first part and then read a story about two teenagers falling in love and then been heartbroken by the end of it than having it been spoiled within the first 10 pages. So I guess if you like stories that spoil the plot within the first part of the story, you should read this book. The next book that I read was Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. So this is a much recommended book and I did find it very unputdownable. I did read it in about 24 hours and I felt like I kept wanting to read more whenever I kept putting it down. It's basically all about this white woman called June who is uh, accused of stealing plot lines for her books and assuming a Asian identity when she doesn't really have one to sell books. Therefore, the name Yellowface. I did find it quite interesting and an interesting look on the way that we market and sell books and entertainment in our history. I did find it a very interesting look on the way that we market and sell entertainment in our society now. And perhaps a tiny bit of a skewed look on cancel culture as well. However, I did feel it was very justified in this book, particularly. 
Uh, and I think that if you are interested in books that are about topics like that or perhaps the way that people with creative jobs have to sometimes lie to present themselves as more interesting to be saleable this is definitely a book I would recommend for you. The next book that I read was Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. This book was recommended to me because I loved Red, White and Royal Blue so much. It's kind of the same type of trope like lovers to enemies. No. <laughs> Enemies to lovers. That would be weird if it was lovers to enemies love story. Uh, and uh, all about this man who needs to get a boyfriend to be able to be approved for his, you know, very weird job of saving the Beatles. And apparently people wouldn't like him or be able to donate money to Dung Beetle Preservation Society unless he had a boyfriend. Very thin premise. Uh, however, it's a very quick and entertaining read. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the way that this book is written. It did feel a bit like fan fiction-y, if I'm quite honest. And also the way that the main character speaks and thinks and the way that that is written into the story. It's not, it's not great. Uh, but if you are looking for easy, simple, quick entertainment, kind of like the same way that you would be entertained by Red, White and Royal Blue, this is a book for you. The next book that I read was The Last Devil to Die by Richard Osman. This is the fourth book in the Thursday Murder Club series and I have to say that I thoroughly enjoy these books. I specifically enjoy the audiobook which is narrated by Fiona Shaw aka Mrs Dursley in uh, a way that is sort of incomparable to anything else that I have listened to. She is amazing. And it also makes the stories much more interesting in the way that you read them. I think perhaps on the paper the characters are a bit flat, but in the way that she gives them life, she does all the accents and everything as well, so it's very fun. So if you like, you know, quirky, funny crime dramas slash comedies, this is a book for you. Actually, the entire series is for you. The next book that I read is called Stargate and Julefortelling by a Norwegian author called Ingvild Risøy. This book is a book that I have actually read for my students in class. Uh, and a few people were asking me how I could take a book like this with the topics that it is discussing and bring it into the classroom during Christmas because this book is about a couple of girls and their father who is an alcoholic and the way that he sort of squanders away their money and can't really afford to buy them a Christmas tree and the way that they struggle through life because you know they're completely always expecting for things to be different but that they know that things won't change and to that I say Christmas isn't always supposed to be happy sometimes we need to teach children about the realistic parts of Christmas as well sometimes things are sad sometimes people don't have enough money sometimes people die it is the way of life, unfortunately. Not everything stops up and becomes magical just because it's Christmas. And I think that if you want a different perspective on Christmas, this is definitely a book that you should read. It's only about 40 odd pages long. So it's quite interesting. The next book that I read was System Collapse by Martha Wells. Uh, this is the seventh book in the Murderbot series. And it's basically just a continuation on from where the last book stopped and uh, it continues to be moving forward. It seems like there's gonna be endless books in this series. I'm just a little bit disappointed that they're quite short and you still keep having to wait a full year for the next one to come out. So if you like sarcastic, neurotic, sort of snarky AI bots that like to comment on everything humans do, you should read this book. Actually, you should read the entire series. The books aren't very long, they're about this big, so you should read all seven. The next book that I read this year is also a reread. It's actually The Prisoner of Azkaban. Now recently, I've taken to joining a quiz team and every other Tuesday for this past half year, we've been doing Harry Potter quizzes at a bar. And I thought I was pretty good at Harry Potter trivia. That was until I went to these quiz nights. Now, we've barely managed to make it past 50% correct the entire time that we've been there. Now, last time we were about 60% above. So I decided I need to refresh my information source. I haven't read these books for ages. I've basically just been re-watching the movies and that's when you get sort of misinformed movieisms stuck in there. And I figured I need to go back and read the books that are the ones that are the longest time since I've read. So this one is one of the books. And the second one is Order of the Phoenix. Currently halfway through this at the moment. It is a, a thicko and the audiobook is about 29 
hours long. So as much as I love spending time with Stephen Fry, obviously, it takes me a while to get through this. Um, this will be the 40, no, hang on, the 51st book that I finished this year, and I will be able to finish it within about a week, I think. So obviously, if you like Harry Potter, read Harry Potter. There's no net recommendation needed for Harry Potter. And the last book that I will be reading this year, which will be wrapping up my 52 books in 52 weeks, is Heartstopper 5. This is the last one to come out in the series. I think there's gonna be one more and then the series will finish. And uh, I have not opened this for the fact that I wanted to save it for the last book of the year. And obviously, since I've recommended quite a few Nick and Charlie books and Heartstopper books, Heartstopper related, universe related things, this will be probably in the same vein as that. So if you enjoy the Heartstopper television series and you can't wait for the next season to come out and you wanna know what happens, you should pick up the graphic novels. Oh God. So that's it guys, those are my 52 books in 52 weeks in 2023. I hope that this was interesting in some way. I know that apparently this is what the kids do now, like long format video talking. And you can just put me on in the background and people could just listen to me talk while they do things. I hope that this has inspired some of you to pick up at least one book. I will be doing the same challenge next year as well, 52 books in 52 weeks. If you are interested in keeping a watch on what I am doing, you can always follow me on Goodreads, the link is below. And obviously also social media sort of like rolled on into the next phase of life, I think. So I won't be doing massive amounts of videos on YouTube anyways. You can always find me on TikTok where I make some makeup videos, some travel videos, and some book related videos as well. You can find me on threads, you can find me on Instagram, and you can find me on Twitter because I refuse to call it X. It will be Twitter forever. I have not updated my phone for that insane reason that I don't want it to say X. It says Twitter forever. That's it then guys, I hope you've had a wonderful 2023 and perhaps I will see you again in 2024. Bye.